Yes, uh, welcome back everyone from the break. And uh, Sai found the scriptures. And he has clarified here that uh, it is 430 years. 430 years. So then, yeah, there was a delay uh, from what God had mentioned to Abraham. Uh, but we know that this happened because of, uh, you know, Moses' actions. Uh, so that's very interesting. I mean, ultimately, the point that we take with us is we have to go by God's instruction and wait for the God-given vision to unfold. Okay, So we depend on the Lord. We wait on him for him to make things happen uh, according to his timeline. So this whole thing about the Kairos moments and being led by the spirit you know, becomes very, very important for us. Okay. So uh, having uh, clarified that, now the next thing for us to remember uh, is that the God-given vision, we may be very excited about it, you know, the way uh, Joseph was excited about the dream that God gave him, but his brothers didn't understand it with the same spirit. Similarly, in our lives, we might be excited about ministry, but even the people who are close to us may not get you know, what, what God has been uh, putting in our hearts. So uh, we must not get discouraged by that because we, we've seen in scripture uh, that people like Moses, see even Moses, he was called to be a deliverer uh, to the children of Israel. But the brethren, it says, meaning those who belonged, uh, the Jewish people, they themselves did not understand that Moses was called to deliver them. So when things like this happen, you know, we must not let that discourage us. Now, even in the example of Apostle Paul, um, he was miraculously, supernaturally uh, saved on the road to Damascus. And then he carried this burden of ministry in his heart. But even the apostles were scared to receive uh, Saul. Okay, it's only later that Barnabas kind of did the whole mediation between the apostles and uh, uh, Saul. And then we see you know, Saul emerging as one of those uh, uh, very mighty apostles. So there was a hesitation. And even among those who belonged uh, to the kingdom of God uh, when Saul wanted to preach the gospel. So uh, this can happen to any one of us, but we must not let that uh, bring us down in any way. Continue to carry the God-given vision and trust that you know God will, uh, at the right time, God will open doors. And also, God will bring clarity uh, both to us and the people around us, right? So maybe gradually, and they too will begin to see what God is doing in our lives and they will support us in the work that he wants us to do. So uh, that is also something for us to note. Now, the God-given vision will face demonic opposition. Uh, and that is a given because Satan does not want God's purposes to be fulfilled. Now, looking at the life of Jesus, you remember when Jesus was born at that time, Herod had ordered the execution of uh, uh, children around Jesus' age because that's the plan of the enemy. He wants to get rid of God's purpose. And the God-given vision, like if you consider, if you can just you know, uh, draw a parallel and say like Jesus is the vision, Jesus is God's vision. What was Satan trying to do? He was trying to kill God's vision right? from uh, being released on the earth. Now, this is seen time and again in many instances. One example that is used in our notes is that of Nehemiah. Nehemiah goes to build the broken down walls of the city. And at that time, certain people uh, rise up against him and they, and they start to question him. Uh, they start to discourage him. They ask him things like, 
what is this thing that you are doing will you rebel against the king so uh, it, you know that it was already a, a daunting task that he needed to complete uh, and in a record period of time and when you're trying to aim for something as great as that and you hear people taunting you um, it can break your spirit okay uh, but so look at nehemiah's response he says the god of heaven himself will prosper us therefore we his servants will arise and build and you have no heritage or right or memorial in jerusalem so that shows the strength of his character he is not willing to uh, give up um, even when discouraging comments are hurled at him so in this manner right satan can oppose us and uh, he can try to um, uh, like what of motivation we are carrying he can dilute it but we must not give up nehemiah continued to do the work of god he continued to stay on track and similarly we too should um, serve the purposes of god faithfully now what are some of the opposing things that the enemy can bring and you know when satan uh, comes to attack us usually it's not uh in a very you know it, it's not in a very direct way or let's put it this way it's subtle right so obviously if satan comes and says uh okay i am uh i am the devil and i'm doing this in your life we'll say okay i rebuke you satan or i'm not uh, going in that path because you're doing this against me so we will know how to recognize okay? but what he generally does is he'll come in subtle ways and then we won't even know that we are going down the wrong path so one way in which he can uh, dilute our motivation he can sort of cloud our vision is distraction now he can bring other things which are also important right uh, before us and then we, we we in our innocence or you know we uh, without even consulting god we get distracted if right? we don't discern but we think yeah everything is good so we we give our attention to other things and we get distracted from the actual vision that god has for us so distraction is a very subtle thing which can happen to us but when distraction happens the challenge is that you know the amount of energy and focus that we have for the vision uh that is dissipated okay and so we are not able to give our best we are not able to give our best resources our best attention to the vision and we end up delaying you know doing what uh, god wants us to do so distraction can happen in a very subtle way or uh, we could also take up diversions you know again abraham is is a good example he uh, chose to birth ishmael okay and he thought that that is the direction in which god was leading him but these diversions can again sap our energy uh, and they can take us away from the 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 focus that god has for us so we must be careful diversions uh, the demonic oppositions can also come in the form of dispute now dispute could be like internal internal disputes generally because uh, and maybe when we are working for god's purpose in the case of nehemiah he was working together with other people externally Uh, the enemy brought trouble internally you know also he tried to uh, uh, cause certain issues but it took the wisdom of god for nehemiah to deal with everything so strife disputes these things can uh, take us away from the purpose and the vision of god and you know again these things happen in a very subtle way and that's the reason you know when we talked about church planting we talked about uh you know the vision vision statement mission statement when we put things clearly uh right at the outset it's easy for people to carry on with those values okay? and even if some misunderstandings arise here and there we can settle them and say no hey no this is our vision this is our mission this is how we are going to progress so internal disputes strife uh, can cause the vision of god and particularly you know for churches and all that uh, to uh, to kind of get clouded okay then demonic opposition 
uh, can also bring discouragement, right? And discouragement, it's um, like it'll 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 reduce our energy. Uh, it will delay us from stepping in to God's purpose. Um, and as the term says, discouragement. So that there's the courage that we need to do what God is calling us to do. You know, we might lose it. I uh, am thinking of Gideon. How he had heard these stories of uh, 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 Midianites, right? Yeah, Midianites. Uh, that they used to come and they used to take away the harvest and the produce of the land and they were oppressing the forefathers. So that was in his mind the whole time. And we see that Gideon was hiding. He was hiding in the, uh, like, you know, that threshing floor place. And he was not willing to take on the enemy because in his mind, he was carrying discouragement. It has happened for generations. Whatever we produce, you know, that is taken away. So let me hide, let me, uh, you know, do my work. Let me keep my harvest. Let me be careful. I don't think I have the, the courage or the ability to face the enemy. So discouragement can also keep us uh, stagnant and it, it will prevent us from stepping into the purposes of God. So these are all ways in which the enemy can come against us and we have to be careful. So when we step out with a vision that God has given us, you know, um, like it's, it's not a prophetic word or anything that, you know, we will face challenges. It, it's not like that. But, you know, we do understand on the earth, uh, Satan is is totally against the purposes of God. So it's a given. He will try to come against us in any way possible. And usually it will be a very subtle thing because that way he'll know that our guards will be down. And then, you know, he can just uh, bring in discouragement, disappointment, all kinds of uh, challenges, you know, that, that will keep us away from God's vision. So that is something for us to be careful about. Okay. Uh, and the next thing here about a God-given vision is that it is always bigger than the individual. Now, Nehemiah and him building the walls of the city is a great example. Initially, in Nehemiah 2, he uh, talks about how God put something in his heart and he did not tell anybody about it. He kept it to himself. But later on, uh, in that same passage you find some verses where he is ready to share that vision with others so uh, you know there are things that god can put in our hearts but that doesn't mean that we are the only individual who is going to fulfill that purpose uh, of god every vision will need more hands on board Okay, and we must be willing to allow people to come alongside us in fulfilling God's vision, right? Which He has put on our hearts. And we're talking about kingdom building. So the God given kingdom vision will involve more than one person. Okay, so which means it is going to take more than just me or more than just you to do what God is calling uh, each one of us to do. So then how do we work? We have to learn to let others step into the vision. Okay. And also learn to work with them. Learn to uh, cast the vision, clarify the vision to them. Learn to work with them to fulfill uh, whatever God has put in our hearts. So we see Nehemiah doing that. He engaged others. They began to build with him. And that's how he could built in 52 days otherwise just imagine only nehemiah doing it it would not have worked so he strategized he communicated right so these are all things that we have to learn it's how to plan how to uh, um you know get people on board how to work with them how to you know uh, get get those short-term goals long-term goals so practical things that we have to let people step into the vision of God. Now, when the vision is large and the vision, you know, has to do with several years, right? Several years, several generations are involved in it. You know, God will also give the plans and the strategy in line with that. So we have to trust God and then we have to make provision for it. We have to make provision for it. So uh, 
we must be willing to let other people step into the vision work with other people so paul is a classic example he calls so many people his partners a uh, fellow worker uh, you know a co laborer fellow laborer fellow servant so there were a lot of people that paul worked with you know, some names given here barnabas silas luke andronicus junia timothy lucius jason uh, titus clement so the list just goes on and then there are so many others whose names are not mentioned but that is how kingdom building is supposed to be it's going to take many of us to do the work of the kingdom so uh, we must learn to work with other people yes yeah uh, and when the vision is fulfilled it causes all of us to celebrate together right and uh, even when things do uh, become challenging and difficult again you know we kind of learn to deal with it together uh, and these are all skills uh, these are all things of wisdom that we have to learn from god so a god given vision will involve more than just a single person okay um the next section here talks about other people find and fulfill their life's calling by participating in a god given vision obviously you know god is the master orchestrator we talked about the holy spirit as the director he knows how people will fit their parts okay he knows at what uh, period people will enter the scene you know what role they will perform what skills they carry so we depend on god we depend on god and we cast the vision when we cast the vision uh, maybe i'm just giving you an example uh, an apostolic ministry where god wants several churches to be planted and that is what god has put on the heart of a leader now the leader might wonder how will like if i tell people about church planting if i equip them for church planting uh, i mean i do you mean to say people will step up the way they did uh you know during the times of the revivals and uh, uh you know the missionaries who, who stepped out in those days do you think our people will do that i don't think so but you know what if god has put that vision on our hearts prayerfully we must be led to uh share it at the right time and you will be amazed to see under that apostolic anointing so many people might actually be ready to step out and go plant churches right but when they do that what's happening they are fulfilling god's vision for their life and god is the one who kind of interconnects you know uh, every vision so it, it's beautiful and it's even hard to describe how god does this but you know uh, people also step into their purpose people also step into their vision uh, as we lead and we must trust that the god given vision as it rightly says it's given by god and god is able to lead us he's also able to lead others um, and equip others and release the purposes of god through their lives as well yeah so the next section here basically it just talks about how uh, purposes are interlinked uh, within the body of christ and god can cause that to happen you know, different visions get interconnected uh, and uh, we go by that okay uh finally there's this last portion here uh talks about how vision is important but at the same time having a not just a big vision but a big heart okay makes all the difference why why does having a big heart um you know why should having a big heart have any importance because when we have a big heart right we will fully depend on god and we will not give the works of the flesh any place in us now we can allow other people to come step into the vision uh, there will there will be no element of you know jealousy insecurity competition right so self centeredness things like that so a big heart will will allow uh, people to step in it will um assist people when they need that uh, and also you know whenever wonderful things happen uh, we attempt for mighty things for the kingdom of god we can all rejoice together if someone else has done it and not us we'll be okay to give them the credit right so 
uh, it's only a big heart that can have this kind of a response so uh, get a hold of god's vision god given vision and you know all the things that we talked about you know step into that vision hold on to that vision um, and also allow others to journey alongside us to fulfill that vision so that's a little bit about uh, the vision for our lives the vision that god gives for the kingdom of god and there are a couple of other apc publications that have been listed here for our reference and if you have the time it will be good uh, you know you can go and read read them so some titles are fulfilling god's purpose for your life then uh, giving birth to the purposes of god don't compromise your calling a time for every purpose so there are four publications uh, that you can also refer to and uh, you you get greater depth uh, of understanding on these things so i just want to pause for a little bit here uh, and then we will proceed okay so tarun has shared something on the chat says 400 plus 40 is 440 30 with the explanation 400 is found exactly after i is birth okay he was born after 30 years for okay 30 years to prophecy of abraham hmm. oh which was your offspring of the strangers in the land okay and it's at this time they let you be just in the dance maybe okay so then tarun this brings another explanation no that moses didn't waste time or yeah it's... god had accounted for the wasting of moses moses's uh time what do you think no no it, uh, moses didn't waste time it was it was exactly 400 years that they came out uh, mm. uh, there's a detailed explanation but it's way too long one one is the prophecy is your offspring god is telling abraham your offspring which counts from the birth of uh, isaac and the exodus uh, 1240 is saying that the egyptian they lived in egypt for 430 it uh, not from the offspring but from the time that abraham was there so it counts 430 in total so but uh, 400 is uh, the exact number that uh, uh, they walk out and uh, the slavery time is only 210 it's not uh, total 400 uh, 400 years is what they spent as strangers uh, the offspring of abraham have spent as strangers in a land that is not of theirs that is what is uh, fulfilled okay yeah thank you thank you darun for uh, that you know detailed uh, research over there so in this case uh, the time that moses spent so say uh, this is this is the understanding that we have now that those 40 years that moses spent in the wilderness god had sort of taken account of it already okay and i'm reminded of one scripture which i want to share with us okay here yeah. right as we are 46 in verse 10 so this uh, verse it says god knows the end from the beginning so i think when he was prophesying to um, abraham like when god was speaking sorry god was speaking to abraham uh, he knew what moses was going to do okay so yeah that's uh, very interesting yes so uh, any other yes go ahead please No, I just said okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Tarun, also for for sharing these details. Uh, any other thoughts, comments before we move on to the next section? And then also, we didn't take account of uh, the time that God heard their cry. and then the time that there was a delay because of the hardness of pharaoh's heart 
It was mm. not immediately that they that Moses came there to Egypt that Pharaoh allowed them to go. But we didn't we didn't count the number of years that they stayed mm. waiting on, on God to allow them to be able to move because of the hardiness of Pharaoh. So despite the fact that yes, Moses uh, had a, a calling of God to deliver them, and he went out of Egypt. Also, we have to take an account of those times, but I believe that everything worked at the time that God wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Isaac, I mean, we, we could kind of keep going into this uh, and researching it further uh, to get all the bits and pieces. But uh, as you, you know, finally said towards the end, uh, it's God's timing and God knew somehow he like God knew the timing uh, and it was worked out no matter what who did uh, it kind of worked out and uh, yeah I think we'll leave it at that <laughs> it's okay everyone otherwise we'll be here calculating the 400 years 430 years uh, plus um, and you're free to to kind of uh, do that research uh, you know outside of, of uh, the session Okay, so but we, we have the, the general understanding here, so I think that that is good for us. Um, so two more questions here. Uh, Shri Kumar, in that case, many can miss their vision. Miss the vision as in how, Shri Kumar, like we are saying that God can still restore if people come back. Yeah, that is true. But uh, as you said that how the, uh, how the enemy try to deviate and... Uh, yeah. and try to deviate the focus and yeah. in case um, if the if those people will not able to like uh, you know come back or you know because of the pressure of their life or whatever it is so in that case is it not possible that um, they can miss their vision and they just uh, uh, yes. uh, they just miss the task which is given to them is it not possible it's possible it's, it's very much possible like so Saul, no Saul. Yeah, that's true. Very true. So yeah. I just said this because uh, uh, many people can miss this vision because they are they might have a call, like as you said, and um, because of um, the lack of uh, proper guidance or the proper uh, knowledge or the proper clarity or proper commitment. So mm -hmm. that was my. That's just want to know that is it possible that they can miss their visions? So yes, Shrikumar, it is possible. Yeah. Thank you. What? Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's it's uh, so true. God can restore, but at the same time, if there's no cooperation from us, then it is possible for people to miss the vision also. So that's a sad part. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Rupa. I saw your hand raised. You have something to add? Yes, ma'am. Uh, but I cannot hear Brother Sri Kumar, Isaac, and Tarun when they are sharing. I cannot hear them. Is it only me that I can uh, that we are not able to hear? Or others, I don't know, ma'am. I just wanted to share that uh, in 15th chapter, when uh, Abraham God talks with Abraham, he also says, "And they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of Amorites is not yet complete." We can also uh, think that God is giving a longer rope and grace for the people in the promise in the Canaanites. Some more time also we can think that way. Maybe that took uh, some more years for them mm -hmm. to that aspect also we can add. Ma'am, I just mm -hmm. thought but that's all. It may not be. Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for uh, you know, just sharing uh, what, what you're thinking. So, yeah, it's possible. It's possible, Mr. Rupa. Um, so, what I'm saying is, whatever, you know, I, I do not know, like, uh, from what Tarun shared, it seems like it was an exact 400 years. But then, you know, uh, from what Isaac uh, is, is sharing and then, you know, your thoughts, now, I don't know, you know, exactly was it 400 or, you know, around 400. But whatever it is, I'm just thinking that, you know, God knows the end from the beginning. He knows how to uh, accommodate, you know, various decisions that people will make. Uh, but there's a scripture in Job that, you know, your plans no one can thwart. 
so you know god knows how to how to release his purposes on the earth okay and uh, if some people miss the vision god still knows like for example david and saul it was it was god's desire that saul would take up the role of the king but unfortunately he didn't want to carry that vision but god had raised up a david to still go ahead and provide leadership to his people so what i'm thinking is see there is a vision given to us um whatever we do with it the right way or the wrong way god is a great god he's a sovereign god and he knows how to release his purposes on the earth so that's what i'm thinking yeah sure yes ma'am yes. thank you thank you yes, thank you okay uh, anything else anything else i mean it's a very interesting topic we could sit here all through the semester but we will have to move on uh does anyone have a question okay maybe no so all right then let's uh, proceed to the next chapter here uh, so far we've talked about the vision and you know how god puts it in our hearts and how uh, he see, he he wants us to initiate it execute it fulfill it and all of that some principles regarding that we we looked at now we'll come to the kingdom builders lifestyle okay uh, so while it is important what we do it is more important who we are okay so uh, the focus is on us it's on our motivation it's on our character it's on our lifestyle and this chapter is a very very key chapter um, you know because it addresses the core issues within each one of us so kingdom builders lifestyle yeah so as kingdom builders um we can get preoccupied with the good works that we do for the kingdom of god and especially right like when uh, uh, we are awakened to the fact that god has uh, a dream for my life and god has a ministry for everyone okay let me step into the ministry and we start doing the works of the ministry we can completely get lost in the works and forget about you know um, other aspects which which could even be the work that god wants to do in us we are just busy doing the works that he wants to do through us and we don't give him any time to do the work that he wants to do in us so you know we can get distracted we can get side tracked uh, and you know we we might uh, not prioritize the lifestyle that we have or the people who we are as kingdom builders but this chapter is going to bring the focus back on three key things that every kingdom builder uh, you know needs to think about and work on first one is godly character okay the second one is spiritual maturity and third one is stewardship and it's important for all the kingdom builders so the first one godly character uh what is character character has to do with a person's uh, um basically moral fiber okay the moral fiber of of an individual what makes up that individual uh we could describe different things to you know that that make up an individual their personality their temperament um uh, you know their the nature that they carry and all that so all that describes the character of an individual so the character of an individual is who a person really is now uh, it is true that we can have a very different image for the world and we can be a totally different person that we alone know okay uh, now our reputation is not our character our character is who we are when we are by ourselves you know the secret choices that we make that nobody is aware of that describes our character our words our attitudes 
uh, our decisions, our thoughts. This describes our character. So overall, you know, when we talk about the character of an individual, um, it points to the value system, the value system that an individual has. And that is extremely important. You know, we can do great things for God, but if our moral fiber, uh, if our value system crashes, I, I mean, obviously, you know, God, God uh, will be happy that we are able to do these things for him. But, you know, how does it bring glory to God when uh, we have failed in terms of our character? So for a kingdom builder, it's important to grow, develop our character, maintain that character. Right? Maintain that character throughout. Whatever God calls us to do, big things, small things, that's not the issue. But the character with which we, we uh, progress as kingdom builders is very, very important. And uh, Joseph is a wonderful example. Uh, we said that he worked for 11 years in Potiphar's house. Okay? And uh, in Genesis chapter 39, we, we read about um, you know, uh, his work in Potiphar's house and how he was trusted for being excellent. He was trusted for being faithful to the extent that we are told that Potiphar gave him everything, charge over everything. Okay? Uh, however, Potiphar's wife, you know, she did not have the right intentions and uh, we, we are uh, told here that she laid longing eyes on him and you know invited him to uh, lay with her but at that point you know you see like you when you read uh, the passage there you see like every day she was tempting him you know calling him and all that but he said no it takes character to stand for what is right okay and uh, you know joseph says things like how can i sin against god by doing this evil thing so he's directly accountable to God. You know, he's not even wondering whether it is it will hurt Potiphar who has um, entrusted him with these responsibilities. But he says, you know, how can I do this sin against God? The master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. So you know, he has that strong moral character and he continues to say no until such a point where you know there's nobody in the house and she kind of uh, uh, grabs a hold of him. And then he runs, right? He runs and uh, uh, his uh, garment is, is with her. And based on that, they accuse uh, Joseph and he's in prison. But throughout all this, you know, we, we're talking about his character because, see, it was not his reputation. He could have made any choice that he wanted and he could have um, sort of covered it up because hey, you know, I, I am so influential in Potiphar's house uh, and yeah, nothing, I, I know how to hide things or it, it doesn't matter what, what choices I make in secret. So uh, Joseph never thought like that. He was always in his heart, he was directly accountable to God and that revealed his character, uh, his, him saying no, despite him, you know, being tempted all along, showed the strength of his character and that nothing could weaken, nothing could weaken, uh, even continual temptation could not weaken his character. So, uh, you know, going by this example, each one of us, we must develop strong moral character. There are so many other examples in, uh, in scripture. Jesus himself, tempted in every way, yet without sin, is what we are told about in Daniel. Uh, Daniel also, uh, he, uh, right, like so many things uh, in, in an early age, um, you know, he, we see that he had devotion for God and that would have strengthened his character. And then later on, when he was serving in Babylon, there were opportunities for him to uh, eat defiled food or bow down before, uh, uh, you know, the king and all, but he never, he never kind of, uh, you know, he never, um, gave into those things. So Daniel is, is again another excellent example. Okay, so we will look at a few things that affect our character. One is um, our choices and our decisions that we make all along. So in the case of Daniel, from a young age, you know, he had, um, he was dedicated to God. So 
in daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 we see his convictions when there was food which was uh, defiled to every candidate who was chosen uh, under uh, under that king so daniel refuses it he and his friends they say okay just give us vegetables get, give us water and basically we will not have defiled food that was his way of expressing worship to the true and living god but that tells us you know what kind of convictions he carried and he developed that character from an early age uh, in daniel's case we also see that he kept good company okay he had friends like shadrach meshach and abednego we read about them also going into the fire right they go to the fire they come out even without the smell of fire so they were the we we confide in our closest friends we get advice from our you know close friends so he was careful about the company that he kept uh, first corinthians 15:33 you know it says uh, do not be deceived evil company corrupts good character so uh, daniel had good friends then daniel discipline daniel developed discipline over time we see that um, you know when the decree was passed for people to bow down before the idol of the king uh, he doesn't do it he goes to his prayer place and he bows down looking in the direction of the temple and he prays daniel 6:10 it says the end of that uh, verse there says prayed and gave thanks before his god as was his custom since early days so custom since early days is referring to some discipline that he had developed over the years and you know discipline and practice will also help us um uh, develop this strong moral character then through adversity and challenges now daniel went through uh, you know um, different situations but in everything you see him depending on god in everything you see him praying trusting god trying to receive um, revelation from god and all that so adversity even through challenging times you know he held on to god so all these things actually contribute to a strong moral character and for us as kingdom builders to be must learn to grow uh, in our character why is a character important the no, character okay for, uh, i i'll just make one statement and then we'll talk about why character is important in kingdom building we can be misled by the thought that gifting and anointing and you know skill and experience and all these things are the most important because we want to accomplish mighty things for god but actually the emphasis should be more on character and lifestyle than on gifting and anointing you know because gifting and anointing yes thank god by grace he gives it to us he gives it to us and you know as we uh, seek him we follow after him he abundantly pours out but character and lifestyle you know that's where um, we really have to cooperate with god every individual has to cooperate with god uh, and uh, grow develop you know say yes to god so many times in so many things uh, and that's not easy so developing character and lifestyle the right kind of kingdom uh, like you know builders lifestyle uh, is not at all easy so we must make sure that we are giving priority to uh, uh, character and lifestyle above above gifting and anointing now when we talk about the kind of leaders that were chosen uh, by the early church the instructions that uh, paul gave timothy we talked about deacons and bishops he gives uh, timothy the pointers and says okay he should be like this uh, any uh, a bishop should be what blameless husband of one wife temperate sober minded good behavior hospitable able to teach not given to wine so as you read the description does not i mean there's no mention of the anointing and gifting yet but he starts by saying look for the character of the individual look for uh, you know the the moral fiber that makes up that individual and that kind of a person you could assign him the responsibility to uh, be an elder or you know be a be a pastor of the 
church so godly character is the foundation for ministry godly character is the foundation for kingdom building okay uh, and uh, we must never forget that because it's very easy for us to get lost in other things the accomplishments but you know, god is looking for something deeper than that and uh, that is our character okay so, and the true strength of our ministry uh, is not i mean it may not sound right but um, the, the the statement here in our notes also says that the true strength of our ministry is not our anointing but our character okay uh, why are we saying this uh see there is also a passage in matthew where jesus says that if we pour out new wine in old wine skin it will break so for new wine we need new wine skin new wine skin is is you know some form like of a like a weather uh, sorry a leather uh, um container which will hold the new wine and the new wine goes through a process of releasing gases and all that so when there's like new wine skin it has the flexibility to expand okay and uh, then the uh, new wine can mature but when the new wine is poured into old wine skin or we're talking about uh, you know poor character what happens god is releasing the anointing but the individual may not be able to keep it for very long now saul is a classic example was he anointed by god to be king very much yes but did it last no it didn't is it because god did not want saul to be king it's very clear that god did intend but yeah later he felt bad that he had chosen uh, saul but it was god's intention for saul to um, you know come into the fullness of what god had called him to do but his character right so he was he was taken over by jealousy and envy and pride and you know selfish ambition and later on rebellion you see rebellion he is trying to compete with the uh, the role of a priest what samuel is supposed to do saul is doing all kinds of things so the character right the poor character could not hold the anointing and sooner or later you know crash and then god had to actually elevate david and uh, reposition bring in another individual who could carry on the work so anointing is important but anointing requires the new wine skin and the wine skin is character you know it is said that uh, anointing can take you places where character can keep you but if there is no character anointing can take you places but then it's just a matter of time uh, uh, you know before uh, uh, like you know you you are not able to um, live for god in a righteous way honor him glorify him and all that with the anointing which he has given so uh, yes kingdom building is about going to great heights for the lord but we cannot sustain it without right character okay more good moral character so the emphasis is over there so our moral character is our true strength it is our true strength it's the person who we are not just you know our giftings and our callings and the anointing which is on display that's all you know uh, over and above but the person who we are uh, that is our true strength so our inner strength a moral character uh you know it it is determined by things like you know uh, how we withstand adversity how we stand up for god in the face of temptation um you know how we how we perform uh, under pressure how we make right choices when it's definitely not easy to uh, make these right choices so ultimately it is our character which is important uh, life must speak so people may forget sermons it okay, sermon titles if we just ask uh, okay if, whoever is your favorite preacher tell me five sermons that he or she preached maybe it's a one two three and that's about it but we remember 
the individual for the person who they are for the values that they stand for uh, you know and 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 the, the 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 kind of character which they have demonstrated so our life is the greatest message which we will ever preach and so we must invest and develop our character uh, there is a, a quote given here by dr edwin louis cole um, on page 52 it says the man is more than the message your message is credible because you are credible when a man is no longer credible his message is suspect and that is so true isn't it like we can receive from somebody whom we trust but we are not able to receive you know, when we cannot trust so developing that character building that character and you know in leadership we can talk about many things right the leadership principles how to lead uh, and all but if the leader does not um, based on his life if he has not gained the trust of the people then how can he lead how can she lead okay. so trust is everything and trust comes on the basis of the life that the person uh, you know lives rather than the things that they do so i uh, will talk more about this uh, we've run out of time actually but uh, still uh, i think i will uh, because this is your last class if there are any comments any thoughts i think we could uh, discuss all that and then we will uh, end the call so yeah we're talking about moral character okay yes yes samuel please go ahead Is Samuel, uh, I can't hear you yet. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now I can hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, so, um, um, I completely agree with character and the importance of character and, you know, character being coarse. So, um, I, I'm not debating that, but I'm weighing it. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's more or less important. I, I can, for now, I can say it's as important as anointing and yeah. gifting and calling, but I, I'm not sure more because uh, one is, I'm thinking, you know, our characters have flaws. Yes, they need work, but... They have flaws as well, and 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 um, you know change. Like I think some character flaws take time to change, uh, and the other part is um, through disciplining and practice. Um, you know, yes, character can be molded, but then that that brings in the element. Like like I'm thinking of all the people who didn't have the required character, like like Gideon. You know, we were talking. He he was he was afraid. He was. Like he, he didn't have that boldness, but God still used him uh, for him. So he's like the counter of probably Saul or Judas, maybe you know. So there, there are people who whose characters are not up to the mark, but God has still been able to use them. And probably you know, with God, God's anointing, they might have uh, gained that strength in character uh, over a period of time. So I'm not sure about the more or less. I'm thinking it's equal. And then the other thing that I'm thinking of is there are there are strong uh, or i mean i don't know character wise like really good people but but you know atheists or agno agnostics you know who who believe in charity and helping others and they they live um, they live with very strict principles like you know i'll not lie and i'll always be kind and i'll always give to the poor but they don't acknowledge so so i'm, I'm trying to look at character in, in the light of all of these but at the same time not denying the importance of character yeah sure sure uh, sir. thank you for that so uh, um yeah so uh, sam what we are saying is we're, we're not saying that gifting and anointing is not important but it's more like the emphasis should be on character more than on uh, you know other aspects 
so that is one thing uh, second is yes god does use us despite our weaknesses but he doesn't want us to stay in those weaknesses now when we look at the life of jacob uh, he was a deceiver but later god kind of prophesied over him right like israel your prince and god wanted him to come out of that and and become a new person so while god uses us with our flaws god's intention and god's goal uh, we'll see that in the next section it's maturity you know christ like this we have to move towards that uh, and and as we move towards it our character will be built now uh, if we are not perfect which is the fact right like all of us we are not perfect can god still work through us yes but what does he need he needs a heart from us which says god you know i'm i'm trying to come up higher every day every moment i'm trying to make it better okay uh, and i'm not going to stay in in my weakness even though you're using me with my weaknesses so it's about that forward looking attitude uh, is is what i would uh, say and the third one uh, which uh, you know you said uh, people of the world they don't belong to the kingdom but uh, you know they have they seemingly have better character uh, now you know we know that uh, our salvation is by faith uh, what by grace through faith so uh, righteous acts are like filthy rags before god so that that really doesn't uh, equate with what we are discussing over here yeah so i hope that makes sense i am yes yes ma'am i'm i'm nodding i know you can't see oh, okay okay sure sure all right yes yeah thank you so yeah thank you everyone really uh, interesting and important uh, topics for us to discuss and i really um, i mean i was looking forward to this class i'm also looking forward to next class so uh, yeah for now we will wrap it up over here uh, and uh, just want someone to pray please and then we will uh, cut the call anyone Okay, I'll I'll pray. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Father, we we thank you, Lord, for the equipping equipping you equipping us, Lord, so that we we are prepared, Lord, for your ministry. For we are prepared to represent you, Lord, on this earth, so that people can see you through us, Lord, and through us, Lord, your word and your kingdom will will advance. Lord. And we pray that that is we. we learn more of your kingdom lord prepare our heart and let your holy spirit lord brood in us lord let your holy spirit prune prune and purify our hearts lord so that we our char- characters are purified and also our spiritual maturity come to to level the level that you you require for us lord we ask for protection lord as we we go our separate ways for today do with us lord and until we meet again in jesus name lord, i pray amen 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 thank you thank you mangi for that prayer and uh, god bless you all have a wonderful day we will meet again in the next session take care bye thank you ma'am thank you thank you shay bye thank, thank you pastor thank you pastor thank you thank you everyone bye thank, thank you ma'am Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.